Jesus a hand clap of praise. Come on, he alone is worthy. Hallelujah, he alone is worthy. There's no God like Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, it's good to be here in Olympia, Washington. I guess y'all can tell I'm not from around Washington. I might have a little accent, but God is God everywhere. I'm so thankful that 2,000 years ago, you see, he went to the whipping post because I needed a healer. The whipping wasn't for our salvation. The whipping was because we needed a healer. But he went a step further because he knew I'd need a savior. Worship with me as I sing this song. Hallelujah. It's all right. How do you like the silence? <laughs> Ames, can I use to explain the love of my Jesus, the life that he gave? And so many times will I praise you today. I lift up my life because you're always the same. And my offering to you I bring your name is Jesus. Your name is Jesus. You're the wonderful counselor, my friend. You're what I hold on to. I know that you brought me through all my days of loss to the cross you knew. I'd need a Savior. How many songs? Can I sing to proclaim your wondrous love of oh and beauty so great but what would I say if you brought down the rain well, every day I walk through the pain, my heart would still say, Your name is Jesus. Your name is Jesus. You're the wonderful counselor, my friend. You're what I hold on to. I know that you brought me through all my days of loss to the cross you knew. I'd need a Savior. I need a Savior, hallelujah. You're what I hold on to. 
I know that you brought me through all my days of loss to the cross you knew. I'd need a Savior. I'd need a Savior. I'd need you, Savior. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, how I love you, Jesus. Come on, I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. If you had to all stand one more time. It's quite an honor to be here. I... I'm humbled that it's time of year. This is a hard time for evangelists, so we need to pray for evangelists all over the United States. And it's a great blessing for me to be able to come here. Now, I've already heard some good things about your pastor. We'll find out if they're true. I'm sure they are. And tonight's kind of a, I know it's hard to stay focused this time of year. I've, I've got a wife and I've adopted my 10-year-old and 8-year-old grandchildren. I know I'm out of my tree. And they were telling me tonight on the phone, when are you coming home, Papa? So... All they're wanting to talk about is what I have got them on their list. I said, well, as of right now, nothing. <laughs> but we'll work on that. And this is kind of, y'all going to get to know me tonight. And this is Bible study night. I'm not a real good teacher. I, but I got a, a sermon on my heart. Matthew 2, verse 1. If you have your Bibles, your iPads, your iPhones, your Androids. I always thought that was a robot, an Android. It is? That's what I thought. Matthew 2, verse 1. Now, when Jesus was born, I'm going to kind of preach about Christmas. Is that all right? Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream 
that they should not return to Herod. They departed into their own country another way. And I'm going to preach just for a little while. You'll find out I'm not a real long-winded guy, so y'all might as well shout to victory now. I'm the ADD poster child. I'd lose my own attention if I preach very long. But I want to preach for a little while on let's bring our gifts to Jesus. Father, I worship you. I magnify your name, God. There is none like you, Lord. There is none beside you. Lord, I'm so thankful for this opportunity to come into your presence tonight. God, I'm so thankful that you died on the cross and shed your blood for an old drug addict like Nick Mahaney. Lord, I'm so thankful that you shed your blood for an alcoholic like Nick Mahaney. And you gave me a new life, Jesus. You set me free, Lord. You broke the bonds of addiction upon me, God. And Lord, I want to praise you tonight. And I want to bring my gift of praise to you tonight, Jesus, for all that you are. You've done so much, but I want to praise you because of who you are. You're the mighty God, Lord. Oh, you're the everlasting Father, Lord. You're the Prince of Peace. Come on, let's give him a hand clap of praise. You may be. Hallelujah. And he still is taller than me down there. A caravan is traveling across the desert. You see, this is not just not any band of travelers, but these are men on a mission. These men are not guided with charts or they're not guided with maps, but they are guided by a star in the heavens. You see, this is not just any star, but this is the star that is showing the way to a baby being born in Bethlehem. And this is not going to be just any child because this is the Messiah of prophecy. You see, this child, unlike any other child ever born, this child has a destiny. We find this child lying in a manger of straw, which if you research it, it was just a trench cut into the rock floor of a cave that was being used as a stable for farm animals, usually sheep, not like the beautiful serene nativity scenes as depicted during the Christmas seasons. But this was a cold, damp cave used to get the sheep out of the wind and the rain. Now, no doubt Mary and Joseph are huddled around this tiny baby. They're trying to keep it warm and protected. The smell of the animals is strong in the air. And this is where the Savior of all mankind chose, just as the prophet said, to appear in the very place that it was prophesied for him to appear at, Bethlehem. You see, a host of angels announces his coming to shepherds, and they come to worship him. Come to worship not just any baby, but this is God robed in flesh. This is God that took one foot in heaven and stepped into humanity on earth, and he robed himself in flesh. He stepped out of the portals of heaven and became flesh. And now here he is in this cave in Bethlehem. Now these wise men from the east, they're not just any men, but some scholars say that these men were part of the seed of Abraham themselves. These wise men are now seeking this Christ child to bring him gifts and to acknowledge who he was. Now I want you to notice the star first leads them to Jerusalem, not Bethlehem, and to King Herod. And there they ask, where is this baby that is to be born, the king of the Jews? For we have followed a star, and it has led us here. The Bible says this troubles Herod. He didn't want a king to be born in his kingdom. So he brings in all the priests, and he brings in all the scribes, and he brings in all the teachers. And they start to look in the scriptures and the prophecies so they can find where this Christ will be born. The priests tell them, tells Herod that it is prophesied that the Messiah will be born in Bethlehem of Judah. This story is told every Christmas, or at least it should be. 
about the wise men, how they followed the star. But what is left out is how the wise men were led by the star first to Jerusalem because they were on a quest. They were on a journey seeking Jesus. So God led them first to where the scripture was so he could really show them the way. You see, everything we need to know on how to get to Jesus is found in this word. That's why it's so important to preach this word like we've never preached it before because this world is in need of and this world is looking for a Savior and the way to that Savior is through the word of God. We don't need some new methods. What we need is some old-fashioned Acts 2.38 Bible preaching that will lead us to Jesus Christ. So before they could ever find their way to Bethlehem, the wise men had to be led in the scriptures first to find Jesus. Now they're told where to find Jesus. Herod tells them, when you find this child, let me know so I can come worship him. And they begin following this star again. And this time it leads them to Bethlehem and to Jesus. Finding Jesus, they come to him and they bring him gifts. They bring him gold, and they bring him frankincense and myrrh. You see, these gifts were not just a random gift. They were not just common or popular gifts. They were gifts of great meaning, and they were gifts of great revelation. You see, gold was given to Jesus that day, not because of its great value, because these men were wise, and they knew the meaning of the gifts they were bringing Gold always represents God and deity in the scripture. Exodus 25 and 17, And thou shalt make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof. And thou shalt make two cherubims of gold. Of beaten work shalt thou make them in the two ends of the mercy seat. And make one cherub on the one end and the other cherub on the other end. Even of the mercy seat ye shall make the cherubims on the two ends thereof. And the cherubim shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings. And their faces shall look one to another toward the mercy seat, shall the faces of the cherubims be. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above the ark, upon the ark, and in the ark. Thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. And there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims which are upon the ark of the testimony of the all things which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. They knew that this was no ordinary baby, but this was the mighty God, that this was the Christ, that this was the Messiah. And when they walked in and they laid that gold at the feet of this child Jesus, they were letting him know that they knew who he was. When we come into his presence, when we come into the presence of Jesus, we need to walk in and we need to let him know that we know that he is God and that there is none like him and that there is none beside him, that he is God and he is God alone. He isn't the second person in some triune trinity, but he is God and he doesn't need any help. Come on, he is our creator. He is our holy one of Israel. He is the mighty God. He's the everlasting father. He is the prince of peace. He is the father. He's the Son. He's the Holy Ghost. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Frankincense. When they brought him frankincense, frankincense was what was burned, and it was used in the temple for praise and worship. The priests would take and burn it in a censer, and they would wave it, and the smoke would rise up as a praise to God. You see, that's what happens when we come together and we started praising Him. That's why the Spirit of God began to move in this place. Because when we begin praising Him, it's just like in the tabernacle of old. Our praise is an incense that rises up to the throne of God. And what it does, it gets His attention. Come on, when we begin to praise Him, 
things from the spiritual realm begin to pour over into the physical realm. I've seen people healed while the body is just praising him. Come on, Judah, which literally interprets as praise, always led Israel into battle. And because of our praise, the praise of a blood-bought, sanctified, Holy Ghost-filled, child of God is powerful. The Bible says Jesus was born in Bethlehem, Judah, or he was born in praise. So when the wise men walked into his presence, they not only brought gold, which represented his deity and his kingship, they also brought frankincense, which was the incense of praise. David tells us in Psalms 141, Lord, I cry unto thee, make haste unto me. Give ear unto my voice when I cry unto thee. Let my prayer be set before thee as incense and the lifting up and the lifting up and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Come on, when we come into the presence of Jesus Christ, we are to praise him. We are lighting that incense that comes up before his throne and then we are to lift our hands as a sacrifice to him. The Bible tells us, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. So they not only realized he was God by bringing him gold, but they praised him when they brought in the incense of frankincense. Myrrh was an anointing oil. Myrrh was anointing oil that was used in the tabernacle. It specifically was used to anoint high priests and kings. It was a spice with a strong aroma. So this spice was used in burial. So they recognized Jesus as God with gold. And they came and they praised him with the incense of praise and frankincense. And they now brought him myrrh to anoint him as their king and their high priest of all mankind. You see, myrrh was also used in burial. And it was mixed with the wine in a drink or a sedative that they called gall at the time of Jesus. Just as important as his birth it was that he had to die so that we could be set free from sin. This baby lying in a chipped out space in the rock in a cave in Bethlehem was unlike any other baby ever born. This was the Christ, the son of the living God born in Bethlehem, but he was really born in the shadow of the cross because his shed blood would now be our salvation. No longer was we going to need bulls. Come on, no longer was we going to need rams and goats. Now it was the blood of this child that the wise men came to see in Judah who they recognized as our God and as our king, and they praised him, and they anointed him, and they prepared him for burial. The last time he would be offered myrrh was on the cross when they mixed it with wine and put it on a sponge. And they tried to put it to his lips and he refused it. Then he said it, it was finished. And he gave up the ghost. And he died on this cruel car cross. At that moment, he purchased our salvation with the crimson cash of his blood. Then they anointed him for burial with the spice myrrh and laid him in a borrowed tomb. But you see, that's not where the story ends. Matthew 28 and 1. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold... There was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen as he said. Come see the place.
come see the place where the Lord lay. Can I tell you, church at Olympia, Washington, that he is alive. He's alive. He's alive. The power of death couldn't kill him. Come on, the grave could not hold him. This same Jesus, this child recognized, praised, and anointed by the wise men is now risen and is alive forever. He's alive right now in this place. Come on, he's alive right now. I want you to know that you can go to the tomb of Buddha and his bones are there. You can go to the tomb of Confucius and his bones are there. But I've been to Jerusalem and I walked in the tomb and there was no bones where Jesus lay because he's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. We walked in this tomb in Jerusalem, outside of Jerusalem. We crowded into this space. There's probably about 15 of us, 12, 15 of us. And there was just a quiet hush that fell upon us. Brother Gleason, Stan Gleason was our assistant general superintendent. We were standing there, and I had tears running down my face. That man of God lifted his hands. He began to sing, He's alive, He's alive. He's alive and I'm forgiven. Heaven's gates are open wide. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive and I'm forgiven. Heaven's gates are open wide. And Benny Hinn's group was standing out there waiting. And when I tell you it was an explosion coming out that door, we were shouting and kicking speaking in tongues. We were shouting things like, I'm so glad I know that he's the only one God that there is, is Jesus Christ, that there is no Trinity. We were shouting and dancing and jumping around because he's alive. He's alive, and I'm forgiven. Now, all through the service, I don't know if you noticed it, but I noticed things. Especially when he walked up there. I went. But you know what he said? Did you not hear what he said? I want you to ask him for nothing. I just want you to worship him. Now, I'm, I'm guilty. I get to praying, and I, I'm an evangelist. I do a lot of driving. And I do a lot of praying while I'm driving because there's some ignorant people out there. <laughs> and God brought me out of jails and crime and drugs and alcohol. And, and I have to watch my temper. I'll just be honest with you. The only time I get mad is when I'm driving. And these folks drive crazy over here. Brother Seagraves loaned me his car, and I'm thinking, man, I'm about to wreck this man's car while these people are driving. And I get to praying, Lord, I want you to bless my family. Nothing wrong with it. Now, listen to me. Lord, we're in need of you. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Remember that old song? Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, oh, Lord. And every once in a while, we just need to say, God, I'm here to praise you, and I'm here to bring you my gifts. I don't have gold. I, don't, I couldn't find frankincense. If they told me I was going to die tonight, I wouldn't know where to go find frankincense. If myrrh, do you know where to find myrrh at? I don't even know if I spelled myrrh right in my notes, okay? But I do have one thing that I can give him. I'm so thankful. Have I told you lately, Lord, how much I praise you and how much I love you? Come on, have I told you how great you are, Jesus? Come on, I dare you to try it. Instead of asking him for something, come on, just walk down here and here in just a second and say, Lord, I just want to praise you just because of who you are. If you've never done anything, remember there's an old Andre Crouch song. 
if, if, if heaven had never been promised to me, it's been worth having the Lord in my life because I used to live in a world of darkness, but he brought me the light. Come on. If he never done another thing, Pastor, for me, I could praise him until my last breath. Come on, he has healed my body. I can't tell you how many times he's healed my family. I can't tell you how many times I was down to my last dollar on the evangelistic field, and I said, God, you're going to have to touch us. We don't know what we're going to do. I need a blessing, and in an hour, somebody called and said, I don't know what's going on, but the Lord told me to call you. Come on. He's been there for me. He's been closer than my brother. He's closer than my best friend. When I get in, a, when I, when I get in anguish and I get alone and I'm feeling tired and, and I'm feeling lonely, you know what I do? Jesus. 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 Because at the very mention of his name, when you begin to mention the name of Jesus, demons begin to tremble. Come on, when you begin to mention the name of Jesus, sickness has to flee. Come on, and you begin to mention the name of Jesus, fear and anguish have to leave. Come on, I wonder if we could stand to our feet right now. And I just want us all to come to the front. It's Bible study night. I'm not going to be too hard on you tonight. And I wonder if we could just begin to just, just tell him how much we love him. Come on, just lift your hands. Come on, tell him I love you, Jesus. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Lord, I love you, Jesus. Come on, let that, let that, there's already a great spirit in here. Come on, let this spirit begin to flow in this place. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. Come on, talk to him. Come on, I want you to just say, just like my brother said, I'm not here to ask for anything, Lord. I'm here to give you my praise. Come on, open up and begin to give him your praise. There you go. Come on. Oh, I thank you, Jesus. Lord, I just want to praise you for my family being healthy. I want to praise you for my family being safe. Come on, I want to praise you, Jesus, because you brought me out of darkness. I want to praise you, Jesus, because I, I listen, church, I shouldn't even be here. I should be dead in print or in a prison somewhere. But he reached down into a drug rehab and he filled me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I just want to thank you, Jesus, because there's none like you, God. There's none beside you, God. As they begin to sing. Amen. Oh, give him the highest praise, for he is worthy to be lifted up. Give him the highest praise, for he is worthy to be lifted up.